Welcome to 3D for Beginners, Twitch stream and Emoji Trends Week on Adobe Live. In case you missed any of our previous streams, you can still view the replays on Behance or YouTube. So check out Illustrator Designers and Composers who use everything Adobe has to offer, including Photoshop, Illustrator, and my favorite, Adobe Fresco. Today, I we are here with the amazing, talented Kyle Jamison, who will create a Peter Tarker inspired scene using simple 3D techniques in the Adobe Sustance Suite. So let's welcome Kyle. Tell us more about what you will show us today, Kyle. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, yeah, so today I'm pretty much going to work a little bit more on the uh, the composition and a little bit of the texturing. But then I think we're going to say we're going to be done with that and then jump into the lighting. And then the final part of the 3D process, we move it either to Photoshop. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go to Photoshop first, but then we're also going to go to either After Effects if we want to kind of have like an animated GIF. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to move to like that compositing phase where we kind of add some like maybe imperfections. Uh, there, there's kind of a process that I like to go through with my compositing to make it because I think one of the things with 3D is like when you finish something, it might look too perfect and mm -hmm. and that then doesn't feel too real. Right. Uh, and so when you do that compositing, that's kind of how I feel like you kind of add those finishing touches that really put it over the top. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to also show off, like I do some streaming as well on uh, Behance. I've been showing off some modeling. I do some After Effects. Um, I'm kind of all over the place in, uh, I've been using some Houdini, uh, using some uh, designer as well in there, importing those textures. Um, kind of showing off my workflows and jumping around those. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to demonstrate today in Stager. I just uploaded a YouTube tutorial on it on my YouTube channel where I kind of create like light blockers. So like if you have this, let's say this hands a sun and then this is like the scene that you're taking a shot of. If you had like a tree kind of casting a shadow on your scene, I think that's a really good way to add some like complexity and uh, mm. more intricacies rather than just having straight light hitting your scene. Um, I think that's a huge thing and a trending thing within like that 3D realm. Uh, yeah, and then uh, one other thing too, if you have like questions for me as well, I'm very active in the uh, Adobe Creative Career Discord too, where I'm a mentor there. We do one-on-ones, mm -hmm. uh, we do AMA panels. So if you kind of have any personal questions or like, career questions or 3d questions if you i'm on discord basically every day uh in there and also like i mentioned to the um the adobe substance 3d is gold like if you have any problems with any of the things that i've discussed today it's a great resource to just go in there there's literally the developers in there there's people that are at the tippity top in terms of um their proficiency in these software so I just kind of wanted to mention that for like further resources if you kind of have troubles in here. But I'm going to go back to my scene and I was actually kind of chewing on some things with the scene. Uh, and you mentioned yesterday, Daniel, about how it's more Peter's work is more like a still life. And I mm -hmm. think I personally want to emulate that more um, with my scene. So I actually deleted uh, the uh, water. Mm -hmm. And I want to just kind of have things be more like a still life. I don't necessarily want to have some like, although I'm still going to mess with the collision effects within stager. I don't really want that like tea. I don't want the water spilling at this point. I, I want it to be more like a still image. I also want to, I think this table in this situation is just too much. I don't think it, it it's kind of invisible as well as not really noticeable mm -hmm. as a table. And I, think I was I gonna to... ask about that table. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, it, it feels like it's too thin and too many. Um, little, yeah, the mesh is too 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 full. So, is there a way to also um, adjust the amount of wires going across and the thickness of those wires? So, so you have to get another. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna ditch it for now. Uh, okay. I like the model. I think it's cool for another type of use case. Um, but for now. I think I'm going to scrap it from this project okay. and I'm actually going to do, I'm going to stick with the shape language that I'm trying to work with here. So I'm going to um, take a cylinder and actually just replace it. 
uh, and I'm going to increase the height of it. There you go. And just use that as the table. And I'm, but I'm also going to stick with maybe uh, the Virgil stuff. Like I'm going to go with his um, table where he actually uses glass as the top, mm -hmm. which is super neat. You can just go over here and go to a glass material. So I'm going to actually just make sure I'm selected on the correct uh, mm -hmm. cylinder, which is here. I need to actually make sure I have everything labeled because it's starting to be, I have so many things in the project <laughs> that when you start doing that, yep. I think I've kind of, yesterday I was saying how I think that it's important to be organized, but mm -hmm. maybe not too organized. I think in this scenario, especially because I'm doing a stream and stuff, I think I, I kind of slacked a little bit on the uh, organization yeah. end of this. So right now I need to make sure that that's the right, uh, you know, the Layer. right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think um, in the beginning, it's okay to just dump it out. But as time goes on, it's, yeah, yeah. It, once it gets to be a little bit unmanageable, it's time to label things. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and I think catching that early on is going to serve you mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets a little scary when you don't. So I think that's always something to keep in mind, really, no matter what project or what software you're using. Um, right in the uh, creative cloud suite is there a way so, to grab those two objects and align them or or you have to yeah do manually well so one by this one? um so this area here actually is where you adjust mm -hmm. all of that information i think that's also the case in illustrator 2 where like it has that like smart um detection mm -hmm. and mm -hmm you can adjust the tolerance or I guess like the, th the threshold of what that is. Okay. This is where you do it. Mm -hmm. I have it at the tiny mode. So it picks up most of the time, I believe it'll, it'll detect it. It's very, um, uh, it's very aware That's of what's around it. I suppose is what I'm kind of looking okay. for here. I don't like this glass. Although I think the glass will look a lot better with, uh, and I'm just gonna put a sandstone here. Like, I mm, think I want a different that. stone, but for now I'm gonna just kind of start applying materials. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go to my material assets that I've downloaded from Adobe stock here and go to designer files. That's where I've stored it. And maybe for these um, intricate uh, sphere patterns, I wanna have a, Let's do like this pattern and you can see that it's kind of iterated there. Maybe I'll change it, but for now I think it looks kind of cool. Maybe actually I just want like this to be plastic. That's kind of cool. Or maybe, yeah. Okay. And then I was talking about origami yesterday too. I think that the paper would be a smart thing to put on the actual origami looking textures. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I need to also start stacking things like in Peter's work, he has things stacked a little more mm -hmm. in this realm. I also kind of noticed that it's a little, these walls are just too crazy. Like I want my focal point and really in Peter's work here, uh, if I can just zoom in here, uh, he, he only has like one texture and one shader on this at all. So I think that I'm just going to really dumb this down but i think i'm getting a little ahead of myself here i want to just focus on the composition real quick all right i have i have these maybe i want to stack these to look a little nicer mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna get out of my camera view here which actually so let's say i can't find i have so many things in my scene here and I can't, and, and I don't feel like constantly looking for my camera, which I've been clicking here. I've noticed that you can just change your view here. Oh, there you go. So instead of having to go in, like I'm, let's say I'm really deep in my folders mm -hmm. and I don't know where my camera is here. All I do here is a switch this tab, mm -hmm. which I think is a lot more efficient yep. uh, and just able to stay a little more organized here. Mm -hmm. So let's align this more. Uh, Let's bring this over. I'm going to jump in real quick and give a big ups to everybody joining us in the chat. Carol, Voodoo Val, Elisandra, Gareth, 
And uh, thank you all for uh, being here. Jack Watson in the house, appreciate ya. And some of the links that uh, Kyle was mentioning, Voodoo Val has already added them to the chat, so check it out. And Adobe Live is doing a survey for community feedback. Please take some time to fill out the following survey to make sure your opinions heard. There is a link in the chat that you should check out right now. Back to you, Kyle. Yeah, and, and like I said, with these orthographic ones, I want it to really play with these 90 degree, 45 degree angles here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm tilting these 45 degrees, bringing this over. And you can see there like that little like box is kind of indicating, I believe it's indicating the uh, orientation uh, relative to these other assets. And because I have these in the group, you know, it's kind of, uh, I need to get used to just moving it correctly, mm -hmm. uh, not moving the whole group. So, all right, I'm going to orient this. I'm going to make sure this is here. Bring this down, bring this to the table. I think this cup is also just ridiculous being floating. And I think the gizmo, so if you, if I've also noticed too, that this is a good shortcut to know. So I've clicked this item, but I don't see the gizmo. I believe you press T or you you press um you press a few of these. This is basically your control panel. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why the orientation. Oh, that's actually because okay. <laughs> Yet again, it's because I'm selected on the group. Mm -hmm. And so when I select the group, the the when we go back to the point that I had yesterday about the the uh origin point. Mm -hmm. is that when I'm selected on the group, the origin point, I think, meets in the middle. Like it meets, because that this teapot and this is actually one group, the orientation point's actually within the middle of all of these uh, mm -hmm. assets. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's let's keep going with the composition here. So, all right, do I have spheres? Yeah, sort of, I have this one group. Do I have triangles? Yeah, I have a cylinder. Do I want more triangles? I kind of do. And I don't right. feel like duplicating them. Well, I think it'd be cool to maybe stack them like uh, like Japanese stones. They have like those things where like they're um, stacked upon each other. Maybe that would mm -hmm. be a cool way to think about these triangles. So let's actually make a group, which is control G or yeah, it is control G and I want to mess with some physics here. I want to make it look like these triangles are stacked upon each other. So I believe it's control D uh, to duplicate. Yup, it is control D. And another thing that I like to think about with these types of compositions, because they are just, you know, like they're assets that I've sort of built. There's some that I've gotten from Adobe Stock. But in mm -hmm. general, too, I want to kind of think in terms of big, medium, and small. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like applying that to some of these 3D designs. So for these triangles, I want a big, medium, and small triangle. And mm -hmm. so I think I'm going to label it. I'm going to say triangle medium. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to duplicate this and call it triangle S for small. And then I'm going to call this triangle uh B for big. So this is my big triangle. Another thing that I'd also like to mention too, which is I think huge and what separates you from a beginner in this uh, 3D world is beveling. Most mm -hmm. things in the real world do not have sharp edges. Right. Even <laughs> during yeah. the beginning of COVID, I really got into cooking. And um, I mean, I always was, but it kind of pushed me a little further. And I really got into um, kitchen knives and um, even yeah. even like knives have like very small. They're not just like a straight sharp edge. They actually do have a very, albeit not very noticeable bevel, but it just kind of goes to show that most things in the world are not just rigid mm -hmm. like these triangles right now. So I want to change that. And to do that, I'm gonna just move these to make sure they're separate. And actually, I'm gonna get into this beveling real quick. Let me just change, let's do the radius. So the radius, let's say like the the medium, and it has a radius because 
this is actually a cylinder object, right? Mm -hmm. Like I actually can adjust this right here. You see how it goes from a triangle mm -hmm. when I have three sides, but then if I adjust this slider down yes. here, that wow. it's actually turning back into a cylinder. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, I want a triangle. So that's actually why when I, when I do control D here and it says cylinder, it's because this object is actually a cylinder, but mm -hmm. I've reduced it. And so we're going to go to this big item and I want the radius here to be, I believe this is measured in a radius of eight centimeters. I believe that that's about correct. And then this medium. So this is my big, this is my medium. This is my small. And I'm going to make the small radius three centimeters. And I'm going to drag that down. Maybe, you know, all right, we have some spheres. This is balancing on here. And I remember I was saying how the uh, the Peter Tarka one, it kind of looks like, or at least my impression of it, is that this could be like a human. So like this is mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just go to my brush or my pencil tool. Like this is the body yeah. and then this is the head. Uh -huh. And then... <laughs> This might be a bit of a stretch, but this could possibly be the like the the torso and the in the feet, mm -hmm. maybe. So I'm gonna kind of go with that idea, and I want to maybe mm. tilt these triangles. Like this, this is a little out there, I think, but just like this might be like the head area. This might be the body, like <laughs> sitting on the chair. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna also adjust these eventually. But sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Let's go back to so I've I've scaled everything that I want, but what I don't have right now, and I'm going to actually get them on my camera view because it's kind of distracting me and I'm going to move in this instance, I do want to move this group and I want to make sure actually that this group is going to be on top of mm -hmm. this designer file that I created or this designer um, model that I've created. And by the way, too, I was looking at the documentation for the Substance Suite, and it was saying that the learning curve is designers generally at the, the highest. Painter, which I still need to dive into, is about the medium. Mm -hmm. And then stager and sampler are on the easier end of the curves. So, you know, it's like if you, in my idea, if you start spending, I try to think of softwares like that in terms of like a video game. It's like, designer in some instances is like the final boss mm -hmm. and if but actually if you start really chipping away at designer i think that your proficiencies and the others will really start to accelerate so i don't i think you should not i think someone mentioned that when they see the node graphs their brain starts to shut <laughs> off but right uh like take it as a challenge like and mm -hmm. and once you start getting proficient at it um you'll really start seeing the potential of all of these but i keep um going off a tangent on that i want to go to the beveling which i keep mentioning so the beveling you can see that these edges here are really sharp that's very just not 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 natural and in here you can actually uh oh well, that's cool too all right so you can, you can basically go to the bevel and mm -hmm. then so now you can see it's like too much uh -huh. But it looks a little nicer. It looks like a little mm -hmm. softer. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, in terms of like psychological stuff, that this softer, this is softer now. Like it's a little more inviting. When things are sharp and pointy, it's it's a, uh, it kind of strikes like, like fear in your brain, or like it's it's not as like inviting. It's not as like happy. Mm -hmm. So I think that beveling things really puts things over um, the top. And I think it adds that nice little detail. So you can see there that I now have a nice. bevel. I can adjust it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can increase the sides, which basically means like I'm subdividing the sides. So like if I make mm -hmm. it zero or if I make it one, you can now see that it's not so smooth. But if I keep it back to the default setting, which is 20, you can now see that I have like a, a nice Mm -hmm. little bevel there and let's just do let's do 0 0.05 which i believe means 0 0.05 centimeters 
Um, and I don't know if there's a way for me to just be like, okay, I'm happy with his bevel. Let me just copy it to these objects. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm just going to do that manually, which doesn't really take too much time. I could just copy the 0.05 value, but I'm just going to paste it in here and click bevel on, do that. And actually, let me let me show off one other thing here, which in the object area, especially for these cylinders, is uh, you can do this like kind of um, arc. It's like an arc tool. I believe that is within uh, Adobe XD where you can mm -hmm. like take a circle. So like I'm going to I'm going to take a cylinder. Actually, let's just duplicate this triangle. Oh not duplicate the group, let's duplicate the triangle. And to really kind of go off of this, like maybe this is like a, this is their feet in the mm -hmm. chair or something like that. I'm gonna actually just do something similar. I'm gonna put this triangle down here. I wanna move my origami assets out of the way. And let's just orient this. Let's go to the rotation. Oh, okay, I'm selected on the group. Okay, so but I actually want to just be selected on this cylinder. Let's drag it out of the group mm -hmm. by just clicking and dragging to here. And let's just call this like bottom triangle, or let's call this triangle bottom. Mm -hmm. And then in the object area, you can go to the slice tool and it's an angle, right? So like if I go like that, and let me demonstrate actually with a, uh, a full cylinder so it makes a little more sense so i take this cylinder and then i can just drag this slice tool and i and have make like pac-man yeah <laughs> precisely whack -a, whack -a, whack -a. so um <laughs> but i'm gonna try this i'm gonna see what this looks like with the triangle i think it's gonna look a little funky i think it actually looks kind of cool like and actually you can maybe go with that, like it's their feet argument, mm -hmm, maybe, or mm -hmm. it's like the torso of the person shape that I'm trying to maybe emulate in my scene. Uh, and bring this over, drag this back down. And right, like I can just adjust it. And then, you know, like there I have a rhombus. I believe that's, if I do 180 degrees, I believe that's like a rhombus. So it's like a. A hexagon if i actually mm -hmm. had like the other side to it mm -hmm. uh but yeah i think that's just a very good way to be like okay do, i want this triangle or i want like a different type of uh shape to just kind of iterate it really fast uh and yeah but i think for now i'm just gonna do this like 35 degrees maybe for now just for purposes of just kind of moving on with this Let's go back to our mm. camera view. Not, I'm in, you're inspiring me right now because now I see the triangle Pac-Man going against the round Pac-Man. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, should, and then all of the little dots. We should try to <laughs> trademark it. <laughs> Voodoo yeah. Val says it's like 3D origami. Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is. And yeah, so let's... I think... You know, even when I'm done this stream, I think I'm going to still continue manipulating the composition. I think the composition might be one of the most time consuming things because you're mm -hmm. kind of like making really minute changes. You're like, oh, I want this to be on top of here. I want this to be this angle. I want this to be on top of this. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any promises that this is going to be like the final right. looking uh, presentation. Yeah. The, and uh, you know what uh your this this Tuesday session with you is uh help me also understand like what can I do with this me I'm a 2d illustrator I like to draw characters I yeah. like to draw things and like why do I want to why would I want to play with these tools besides the metaverse stuff you know because I'm already thinking about the, the 3d space and I do have a VR and all that but but I'm oh, thinking yeah. I'm thinking like if I if if you're illustrating a character with shapes kind of like the the other the, the the inspiration images that we just saw earlier then that means you could kind of tell a story like if you 
like you say, you keep moving around the elements, changing compositions. You can literally have three different snapshots of the same scene where something is different. And that in itself will tell a story like the character moving, sipping some water. I don't know anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. or you could, I could foresee in the future, like your characters that you draw and stuff, you will be able to project them into Adobe uh, Arrow, mm -hmm. which I've also right. done. And, and I think you can do that. Uh, you can import PNGs into Adobe Arrow. If we have time, I could mess with that. Yeah, actually you have it right here. Okay, so when you click this, mm -hmm. you can save yours as a, as a, you can actually publish it as a, a link or if I just want to, for example, like, let's say I'm super proud of this sphere array <laughs> thing that I did in designer, uh -huh. I can actually just export individual things. You can also then project your drawings. Like, let's say you have a character and then all around it, it's a PNG. So it's all like transparent for your end, mm -hmm. which actually, let me a little demonstrate something like that, um, especially for the lighting, because I kind of, you know, I think I could tinker all day with uh, the composition, mm -hmm. but in terms of, this actually goes back to the tutorial that I made, um, and um, I don't speak French, so I hope I don't butcher her name, but uh, Lu Louise <laughs> or Louis, um, which is a person that helped me on the Substance Suite uh, Discord. She helped me figure out how to make a light blocker, mm -hmm. um, which actually today, I've messed with a little bit. And this is a great use case to not be scared of designer. So I'm gonna actually, I wanna make a light blocker. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna add a HDRI in here. I'm gonna go to lights right here. And I'm gonna say, I want, I want this scene to just have interesting shadows. And mm -hmm. I want this like light here. <gasps> oh my and gosh. This kind of, I need to adjust the rotation. Okay, there you go. So mm -hmm. you can now see actually with the shadow, this basically means that uh, if I go here, another really interesting thing to consider too, when you like look in the sky and it's like daytime, a lot of the light is blue. So you can kind of like mm -hmm. colorize, it's called colorize function right here. So I can like colorize my HDRI. In this instance, I chose red, but let's say I want it to be like, sky blue so i'm gonna keep it like this value about right here but you can oh my bad i just misclicked okay <laughs> there you go uh so i have it about like right here and i'm gonna drag it like right there and press escape and i want this light to be a lot more noticeable and you can now see we kind of have like a daytime with this hdri so like hdris are basically really dense photos mm -hmm. um i've never made one myself but i think you 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 have to take like a 360 degree like panoramic shot mm -hmm. and it collects all the light information and for this type of you can actually see now that like this basically means and i i spoke upon this a little bit yesterday with the the tarka scenes like his light is coming in from the left mm -hmm. like you can see these like splotches right here are hitting here so if i if i wanted that my light's actually coming directly um straight ahead i have it i had a I actually have it at 135 degrees right here this is where you adjust the angle mm -hmm. but i think peter has his light like that yep right like ways. nine mm -hmm. it's probably like 90 degrees and actually i think that would be um very applicable to this like mm -hmm. so you can now see we have shadows and when i turn on ray tracing the shadows will be even more interesting mm -hmm. um but we're gonna actually try to add some more complexity to this by doing uh getting out of the camera view okay so i'm like all right i'm happy with my environment light another nuanced thing about these hdris is like some of these hdris are cloudy some of them are taken at night some of them are made inside, some of them are made outside, some of them are taken in forests. So you have to like keep that in mind when you're using these. Like, I mean, this one's just kind of preposterous. It's very, I think, applicable if you're trying to do some like synth wave futuristic stuff. But for my scene, excuse me, I just want, um, 
all of this. I just want this to be back to 90 degrees and it got rid of the colorized, but I'll just redo that. And so let's let's get to the my the tutorial that I made was on a light blocker. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like think to yourself, let's say the scene was taken in the tutorial that I have, I use an instance of let's say your scene is shot in a desert. And let's say in a desert you have cacti, you have palm trees, you you have things that are obscuring the light and casting interesting shadows because right now with my scene i just have i although the shadows are interesting to some mm -hmm. degree like you can see it they're not interesting enough for me and i like the fact that light blockers kind of maybe art direct for you a little more and mm -hmm. i think they also add some like intricacy as mm -hmm. well as I feel like they add a little more nuance to your scene. So we're gonna go to designer here. And gotcha. I literally am starting from scratch. So if you're scared That's of designer, mm -hmm. this is <laughs> like super simple. I'm gonna try to walk through everything here. I'm gonna there do a go. new substance graph, there right? So I click this top left, I click, and, I click a new graph. We're literally gonna be using one node, like just mm -hmm. one simple node and you have a bunch of maps that I mentioned yesterday. So I did say one node and I'm going to stick with one node, but I'm just going to show off some of the nodes. Like you have all these types of patterns. You have a Voronoi texture, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of how to make like cell type of shapes. In my instance, let's say I want some clouds and actually I'm going to use clouds three. So you just kind of have like all of these patterns and a lot of these patterns are used in a lot more complex, uh, you know, like um, designer files. It does get a little more nitty gritty, but in this instance, I am just going to stick with one single cloud and I'm going to just do this. All I'm going to do is plug this into the base color mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, wow. So cool. This is now projected here. And then what I'm going to do is what I want to do is bring this into stager and I want this, I'm going to make a plane. So I'm going to scroll up here, add a plane, drag this over, scale it up. And you can now see that I actually do that. It does do the, the purpose here. Like, right. I now have, so if I go to my camera, I now have, I'm going to actually label this. I'm going to call this light block. Oh, I see. And so, so, uh, so I it now, softens it up. It softens yeah. up the, the brightness. Yeah, yes. Right. Yes. So if I adjust this position, you can now see at the bottom right right now, you can see like I'm adding a shadow to it. But with designer, I can kind of make like, I can make procedural shadow casters and I can have very different kinds and I'm going to continue. I'm going to go back to designer and I'm going to go here and I am going to export this, right? So there's a few ways to export it. I can export this as texture maps. So in a lot of instances, let's say I just want to export all of these, but literally for this, this is just going to try to be a super simple uh, use case of designer is I'm in clouds and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to mm -hmm. collect this here. You need to collect this tool or select this tool icon and go to export outputs. Mm -hmm. So this is a fancy little screen here. That's basically saying, Hey, choose your folder. And it actually just selects all of your textures here that I have. I literally just want the base color, which is also called a diffuse map in some instances and Another really important thing with these light blockers is that I just want a black and white value. I don't want a colored image. I, I, I just want that. And I'm just going to select it to my desktop and I'm going to export it. So I exported it. It says export done. That's fantastic. Uh, then I'm going to jump back to stager and I'm going to get out of my camera view to demonstrate this. So I have, I have my blocker set up. I can adjust the angle. I can adjust the mm -hmm. position. What I'm going to actually end up doing is duplicating it, but I'm going to go to my materials here and I'm going to go to the base color. And you can now see that I could be like, oh, well, 
I can change the color, blah, blah, blah. But that's, that's not what I want to do. I want to actually mm -hmm. import the image that I just exported from uh, yep. designer, select it. Mm -hmm. And you can now see that I, I have designer. I have mm -hmm. the, the texture map that I made here. I could make it a Voronoi pattern. I, I could do many more complicated things, but for now I just want that. And I'm going to go back to stager. The very last thing that I need to do to make this light blocker is I'm going to go to my opacity map and something to really consider when you're working with grayscale mm -hmm. in 3D, at least in stager, I'm not sure if this applies to every other application, but think of this, the black values means that it is transparent. So that means that the light is going to go through it when it's white, it is opaque. So now mm. you can see that I kind of have like clouds uh -huh. and it now doesn't cast it, but that's because I don't have the ray tracing turned on. Mm -hmm. And this might look a little noisy at first, but, and it is a little noisy, but now what? as I move this, it should cast a shadow. Um, and it might be okay. a little too faint here let's let's like i think it's either not large enough or it needs it's to be um, too transparent yeah or i need to like adjust the size of it but you can see like i think it is showing up it's mm -hmm. a little faint so actually i'm just gonna mm -hmm. oh, i see actually, it on the ground you can... you can see it on the floor right there uh-huh yeah yeah right so the outline and so now when i go into my camera view uh let's let's actually go let's get out of ray tracing real quick because that will slow the scene down um i'm gonna get out of my camera view again and then i'm just gonna duplicate this i'm gonna like just kind of add a little more intricacy to my light blockers so i'm gonna actually group this so i'm making sure like i'm gonna call this light and i'm gonna just drag let's let's kind of get back to this organization mindset so i'm gonna just call this like the building and i don't think there's anything in this group so i'm gonna delete that let's go back to this light group and just i want to have everything kind of organized like my environment which is my light and then i have my light here and so now i've duplicated my light blocker and now i have like multiple kinds so it's really gonna block it so I'd, let's say like you know let's do that and so just kind of go to that like procedural mindset if i really wanted for some reason i'm not happy with this texture i can just go back into designer and then in this clouds material i have a random seed value so each time i drag this it changes mm. to a different pattern mm -hmm. uh, you can adjust the width you can adjust the height of it so i could do the scale like Maybe I just want it to be a lot more a lot busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot busier mm -hmm. or a lot smaller. Maybe I want like a new material. I want like a Voronoi pattern, um, which could also look kind of cool. But for now, like that's just kind of the purpose of that. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. I'm going to duplicate this one more time and just drag it up here. And hopefully. Also, if I want a little more iteration, I can maybe rotate some mm -hmm. some of these light blocking planes different mm -hmm. and this also kind of goes to the fact that like a lot of 3d if you kind of know some like tricks and you have certain things in your tool bag um they can make some interesting outcomes so now mm -hmm. now you can actually see when i'm not when i'm in real time mode right now i'm actually uh i don't have any light right now i mean i do have light but it's all being blocked but when i go to my uh let me just adjust this. Let's do like negative 32, 32, negative 22. Uh, I think that's about in the middle. But like I said, the compositional stuff, I think is just gonna, it's like putting a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the light blockers, I believe are working. They might be a little faint mm -hmm. because of the values, the white and black values from designer and i'm gonna i'm just gonna show one other it, uh 
thing that will literally show the light blocking very well because when working with these types of shades like this isn't pure white like these these cells here have like a gradient fall off like this this white here might be like a value of one but then it gets a little more grayscale and then it turns black so actually i'm gonna try to to just really demonstrate the light blocking capabilities here i'm gonna just go to uh get out of camera view go back to these planes and i'm gonna choose this plane and i'm gonna go back to the material and i'm gonna select a oops yep you can actually this is what i'm gonna do eventually but for now mm. actually i'm gonna select a file and so I've actually done it. I've done it here, but actually I'm just gonna demonstrate what I mean. So like I have this image now and I'm just gonna plug this image into my uh, light blocker here. And now Whoa. I have this, but Whoa. the problem, so the problem here is actually the thing that I need to edit is that I actually have it inverted. Like, mm -hmm these sakura tree uh branches which literally i just i just googled like sakura tree <laughs> clip art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you could just you know make in anything but like i just like went to images you could get it from adobe stock too but you could you want more of like a black and white image mm -hmm. like something like that would work but all i've done is just download something from there and so the problem i now have is that i actually want the information of these trees and i want the information of these leaves because let's say there you're you're at like a temple here in this scene mm -hmm. and i actually want the trees to be blocking out the light mm -hmm. well i'm gonna go here and then i'm going to go into my material go to base color and i'm gonna actually just x out of that real quick i'm gonna save this just to make sure it's all good. And I'm going to then click edit and I'm going to do a selection here. So I just want to do, I wanna select the white values, which I think <laughs> Photoshop is doing correctly here. And I'm just Val just uh, read my mind. She says, this is epic. And oh, uh, you. <laughs> yes, and you jumping around different apps like this is the um, benefit of the Creative Cloud is that you not only yeah, just have access to one application or one program, is that you you're hopping around all these different programs within the Creative Cloud that work together, communicate with each other, save the files, move the files across uh, each uh, application so that you can get uh, out of every application a little something that adds to the overall composition of your project. So this is awesome. Really yeah, cool. absolutely. All right. So mm -hmm. there I wanted to, um, well, actually I think I just did a longer route. I could have inverted this, right? Mm -hmm. Because my problem here is that I want this black to be white and I want this white to be black right. for my, for my blocker. And mm -hmm. actually I think I just did a longer route. I think I could have just done an invert, uh, which is, it's not coming to me. So I'm just going to stick with the longer route here. What I basically okay. just did was like, Hey, I don't, and also in the discord, I, this image was actually just a black, um, or excuse me, I think this, the, the, the branches might've been white and then the background was completely transparent. So I was like, oh yeah, of course this blocker would work, but it mm -hmm. didn't mm. because these values in here need to be black and white. So okay. let's finally finish this. Let's, let's go to here. All I did here was instead of doing the invert, which I think would be, a, I believe a little quicker and a little faster there, but this is my workaround. I, I did mm -hmm. a color uh, select here. So I just want to select all my blacks and then I press control J to, uh, I think that's the command for separate from selection, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just do a solid color and do FFF and then save it. And it should update in here. If it doesn't, it's fine. Mm -hmm. it, it sometimes doesn't it sometimes does it's like a smart object so that wherever it is uh yeah it mm -hmm. it is like that functionality correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna, i'm just gonna scrap it i already had mm -hmm. i had I the correct it. one i was kind of just saying that that's mm -hmm. how i would approach this boom um and it should be working here let me actually go i believe it's because i'm not in ray traced mode 
and I think and your settings are are uh, in in oh, here. What? My yeah, bad. I go. think I now know the one thing I just messed up is mm -hmm. I need to make sure that the opacity um, is uh, selected as well. Mm -hmm. So, and sorry, I think a fire truck is passing yeah. by. <laughs> and this is a good <laughs> opportunity to let everybody know that if you're just joining us, Kyle is taking us through the process of building your scene, there arranging you your geometry, applying textures, and setting up your cameras across 3D apps by Adobe. And Adobe Live Replays are available when you're offline. We have replays both on YouTube and Behance. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any creative goodness. Okay. No, boom. So there you go. Yeah, that is like a light blocking technique. You can now see mm -hmm. that like it looks so mm -hmm. much more interesting. Like mm -hmm. let's let's turn it off. It's like a, it's like a, the light coming through the window, but there's light being blocked by the trees outside your window. Absolutely. Yes. And Yes. And in designer, there's there's so many like uh, different types of things. Like if you wanted to do um, like, uh, I don't know, you could use this as a light blocker and like there's so many different types of patterns. I'm looking for uh, like if you wanted to have it look like a you're inside and like the lights going through a window pane, which I think is another really good use case of a light blocker. Mm -hmm. I believe you could do something like this. Right. Yeah, I could do like a stripes. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem with the other light blocker is exactly because these values of these light blockers here are actually one and uh and it works it works very well in ray trace mode when i have it out of ray trace mode it's basically just you need to like keep that in account even mm -hmm. though it looks like it should be working in here mm -hmm. you need to have ray trace mode because real time versus ray tracing in in 3d the way that light is interpreted like light goes down reflects and then the information comes into your camera that's ray mm -hmm. tracing with mm. real time it's a little different so i'm in real time right now so you'd be like oh why is this not working right you need to have it in ray trace to actually mm -hmm. show the mm -hmm. the shadow information which looks super cool here yeah it's nice uh, uh, <laughs> voodoo Vals yeah. is amazing catherine says it's looking great kyle Appreciate yeah thank it. you it's awesome um and so I could then have just multiple types of light blockers mm -hmm. uh, i could just go back i could make these planes different um Etc. Mm -hmm. And one one last thing about these light blockers, because it's kind of a thing that I've been experimenting with and I think is super fascinating and makes your scenes, I think, look a lot more uh, intriguing and is used a lot in 3D, um, is that these work really well where the other one didn't because that the, the color value here is one in mm -hmm. white. And then this is actually like the rest of the plane is a black value mm -hmm. and it's zero. So that's why the shadows look really good compared to the ones that I was doing here. Like mm -hmm. in this clouds texture, you have ranges from zero to one. I see. Yep. Uh, if that. Yeah. Kind of. It, it was having a harder time to to pull that apart. And, and yeah. Show and it. you can you mm -hmm. could do things like if I really wanted it to work, I'm not going to export it again, but like I could just go in here, press tab and then do like uh, a levels and then bring it here. Mm. And then I could adjust the levels just like you would do mm -hmm. in like a Photoshop to situation. Mm -hmm. And then you start making values closer to Ooh, zero. Oh, look at that. Oh, snap. Ooh, so yeah. if I were to do a light blocker now, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm just going to do real quick because I just want to kind of demonstrate. <laughs> Even it's real easy to get sidetracked and start having fun. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> All right, so I just exported it, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna actually I'm gonna save this because I I don't think I've saved in a little bit. Yes. And then I'm going to just go back just to demonstrate it. I'm just gonna go back here, go to this, make sure I select my diffuse map, and then I also select my opacity. And actually, you can now see that it's a. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually being projected, this diffuse is being projected on my opacity map. So I just need to make sure I have this correctly plugged in. There you go. All right. Oh, okay, cool. So now it's more like mm -hmm. your like clouds, I mm -hmm. guess, is mm -hmm. maybe the use case here. Mm -hmm. And so now you, you have a little more abstract looking light blocking. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's still work. It's working now because I did that level clamping here because our values are now closer from zero to one. Um, but I think I kind of, you know, you can kind of decide what you like, what you don't like with this. You can move the blockers, you can rotate them, et cetera, et cetera. I think for now, what it's 350. So what we have about another 50 more minutes 40 so. minutes. Yep. Yeah, 40 minutes before we hop on to the artist Ooh, spotlight. Okay. So we're good. And now you time. can see that uh, when it, I have it like, traced, it gets, yeah. it gets, the computer gets slower. So someone's yeah. point yesterday was about, uh, they were asking like what your specs are. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like when you're working in real time, it's a lot faster. But once you click the ray trace button and you have a bunch of like scenes, you have a bunch of shading, you have a bunch of textures in here, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to start getting slowed down and bogged down. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I'm going to actually just, hmm, what do you, I think that for now, like I said, I, I'm going to adjust this composition again. Like I'm not quite happy with it and I don't think it really hits this like mark yet. Mm-hmm. But I think that's just more like arranging and stuff. And I have a little more time I'm going to get back into it. But I'm going to just, I think for now, I want to demonstrate. Let's say, let's just say that I was happy with this. I'm like, okay, this, this ray tracing is awesome. These shadows are good. And I'm happy with all of my stuff here. Like, I think I'm just going to, let's just change because my focal point, I want it to be the objects. And this one more like statement too about like just kind of, nailing this back in is like with 3d a lot of it goes on in the background like the Mm -hmm. the the shadows come from something that you actually don't if you don't really know 3d you would not know that these light blockers are actually Mm -hmm. like in the background right they're actually contributing a lot to it but in the actual image you might have no idea that that's happening right so it's a lot of like it it helps also diffuse some of that redness of that background uh square wall um, yeah, which within the composition, because then it, 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 it that's adds that, um, you know, uh, more character to it than just, a, than looking flat. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you don't want flat lighting in most scenes. Mm-hmm. Like if mm-hmm. you're doing like a product shot or something and you want it to be really clean and stuff, mm-hmm. um, but then you kind of teeter on the edge of stuff, not looking too realistic. So, you know. I kind of want like the walls and stuff to just be kind of a little more basic. And so like maybe for the wall here, I actually want like a concrete texture. So I can just go to the stock marketplace in 3D and look up like concrete. And we're here. Hold on. Let's I think it worked. Uh, let's do concrete. OK, so you actually do have some like free assets as well in here. And let's do smooth concrete. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Concrete float, stylized concrete, painted concrete. I think I already have this downloaded and I do like the painted concrete. So I'm gonna actually go here and I'm gonna actually download it, which I think should be a pretty quick download. Successfully downloaded, I'm gonna open it. So there's my painted concrete and I'm just gonna now that was that simple. Now I just drag it into here and put it on the wall. And I oh. now have the painted concrete. Let's go back mm-hmm. into the camera view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe it's not my favorite walls. And I think like the wood might be a little too crazy and stuff. But the shading mm-hmm. and stuff, like really the most iterative stuff in my mind is like I should in I should really nail the composition before I start applying these shaders. The shaders, I think, are just kind of like fun and they take the most time for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for now, I'm going to go to render because I want to get a little bit into um, the co- the compositing workflow that I generally do when I want to finish a scene. And we're going to go to render. You kind of all of your presets here. You can go to ultra. So just to kind of explain some of these things, like your sample count really matters. Like, let's say, like if I wanted to print this render, I'd want a very high sample count. A mm. very high sample count means that it's gonna take a lot longer. Mm. Uh, it's just the name of the game here. But like, if you wanted like a, 
that's kind of how like pixel art work. You, mm. Pixel art generally has a very low sample count and you're manipulating those things. So for instance, when you change the preset here, it says draft and the sample counts at 128. In terms of rendering and stuff, I actually want to even have it lower just because for this stream and stuff, like rendering can take some time. Mm -hmm. I have this placement turned on too, which also then, um, you know, can increase the time. The resolution, I have it at full. I have my camera, it's a 1920 by 1080 image. And then here, you can choose your export formats. So I have PSD, I have PNG. Let's do that. Let's click mm -hmm. render and it's gonna start rendering out the scene mm -hmm. and it renders it out in the, um, I hope it's not gonna be too long because I think that when you do it at like eight samples and stuff like this, it's not gonna be too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like resolution, it went, you know, right? So my resolution is 1920 by 1080, which is great. Oh, okay. That's, okay. in my opinion, that, that's kind of like a standard. Mm -hmm. You can change your, oh, there you go. Perfect, actually. This is not gonna take too much time because of the fact that I don't have displacement turned on. That is another mm -hmm. thing that really starts to crank your render time and really test your computer. Uh, that's when things just start to get a little slower. But then you can see here, like this is gonna take like 30 seconds to render for one frame which is not Very too cool. bad. Yeah. I rendered, I think I rendered for my tutorial I made, I think I rendered it at like the high setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a thousand twenty four samples and it took like nine minutes. Okay. <laughs> which like, I don't want to like bore people with here. Mm -hmm. So, all right, cool. I've done that now. All right, I'm a little, it's all messy here. Let's, let's, let's close designer. I've kind of demonstrated that. Mm -hmm. Let's close this. Let's close that. Let's get out of Discord. Let's close. Alessandra Zoom. says this looks great. Gareth had mentioned earlier that uh, the lighting it was like Gobos using photography and film. That's yeah, cool. exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. So, all right, now we're in Photoshop and we're gonna do compositing. Uh, and you have a few things here, mm. I believe. There's a lot of jargon involved with this stuff. Like this, Ooh. I believe in in um, in compositing. Wow. I know what a depth map is, mm -hmm. but compositing, like there's a thing called crypto matting, um, mm -hmm. where like you kind of separate your materials. Like you're saying, oh, like the material selection mask, right? Like you can see that these porcelains are the same material mm -hmm. in this mask. Mm -hmm. It identifies what materials are the same. So like. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the use case for this would be, let's say I wanted on post, which I'm in post right now. I'm in the compositing phase. I wanted to maybe add like, for some reason I didn't do it in 3D. Maybe I want to add like scratches to it or something. You could uh, just isolate these selections and then add mm -hmm. it in post. Or if I wanted to do some painting or I wanted to do some masking or, or I could also see a use case of maybe trying to project um, text or Mm -hmm. iconography or something on it and i didn't want to do it in 3d i think that would be a good use case but for me i'm very acquainted with a depth map which mm -hmm. is kind of your perception it's it's sort of measuring the perception of how, how far things are and gives you yeah i mean simply mm -hmm. it gives you a measurement of depth so i'm gonna go to here i'm gonna actually click out of here i'm gonna control d or excuse me how do you duplicate? I think it's control J. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So control J I'm going to select my depth map and I'm going to go to select. I'm going to select the color range and I'm going to make the fuzziness. I want to select most of it. Like I'm going to select all these and I have most of it selected. Maybe not all of it. Maybe I need to go back to there, go to the selection color range and maybe I need to actually select a color, which I'm just going to choose white. So I think now it has most of my composition selected. Maybe I'm going to do it one more time. And I, I kind of want like, I also want this. And so then I'm going to mask it. I'm going to select here. And I think, so I'm going to, I think to, to do this now, I just select mask. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. 
now it's applied the mask to my image. So yeah, I think that <laughs> this, this is correct to some degree. I think I, I still need to kind of tinker with this. Mm -hmm. But now if I go here and I go to filter, go to, uh, I want the curves because I want to like adjust. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait, that's right here. Yeah, curves are right here. And I want Boom. the oh wow. actually want the cur I think I want the curves on this layer or no I want the curves on my um on my mask and I think that's here right it's somewhere here it's um it's under select color range filter I believe it would be under filter the um, but I might just have to come back to this if I yeah. can't find it at the moment I think curves are. I'm pulling up my Photoshop now so I can remember. I think <laughs> it it's on. I'll come back to it, honestly. Image gonna... adjustments. Okay. Yeah. Image adjustments. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It is control M to do that. All right, that's go. good to know. Yeah. But I think, so once you, yeah, you can see here that once I start adjusting these curves, it like adjusts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the depth map a little bit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I don't really like how this depth map is showing up. So I'm gonna actually just, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do like, I'm gonna do a linear dodge and then I'm just gonna adjust the opacity a little bit. So like if I want it to maybe look foggy when I have linear dodge selected, I'm just gonna lower the opacity. So like now there's no fog, but I want like a little bit of fog and I'm gonna keep the opacity at about like 10. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And now I also want to do some color correction. And I'm going to use the camera raw, which is here. I also want a vignette. Mm -hmm. Let me actually also, let me make sure that I'm not, okay, good. I'm not in ray trace mode here. So my computer is not going to be slowing down. And yeah, I mean, if, any of you haven't used camera raw, I mean, it's pretty much how you adjust the, uh, a lot of things, your shadow, your contrast, mm -hmm. the, the color temperature in my scene, it's like daytime. Right. And, and I want it to be kind of like noon ish. So I want it to be more blue because the sky is generally, you know, if it's a clear sky, maybe like it's a little cloudy, it will have some like blue tint to it. Um, maybe I, I want to adjust my exposure, et cetera, et cetera. I generally to make it seem less like 3d, I want to add a vignette, uh, which I thought was in here. I swear there's a vignette in effect in here in, in the camera raw calibration effects. Yeah, it is in here. Okay, good. So. Okay, I want the opposite. Yeah, I want this type of vignette effect. I don't want to go too crazy. Like, I think that looks kind of cool, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's too much. Let's keep it at like negative 16 and then select OK. I actually want to convert this into a smart object because I don't want these. Uh, I want to mm -hmm. be able to like adjust these settings. Right. Um, so for now, I do have the regular image. I have the denoised image let's so let's say like this is rendered image let's actually let's let's group this and say like color correct and vignette that's that's done um now i want to add another layer and i want to add some blur which actually i could have done in um uh, stager like i could have added some depth of field so to add depth of field you can go to camera and then it's actually right here mm -hmm. uh oh wait is it because i'm not okay no i'm selected on camera i'm in ray traced i don't know why this depth of field's not turned on at the moment oh it's because it's locked mm -hmm. okay when you lock items in here i've noticed that a lot of things are like not adjustable basically so i have to make sure that i'm not going to move my camera right now because then i'm gonna have to like mm -hmm. figure out how to get back to it but i've also <laughs> then learned if you let's say like i mess up the camera like uh i'm like oh my god 
now I don't have my shot, you click this camera undo, mm -hmm. which, huh, for some reason, oh, I think it just locked it. Huh. I think that should have worked. I'm gonna have to reorient my camera when I uh, re-render this, mm -hmm. but um, for now, yeah, that's like a about right. Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just stop messing with it for a second. I, I was just kind of demonstrating that with this depth of field, I could, for example, turn it on once this is done saving, and then when you turn the depth of field on, you can okay, good. So it selected there. And then you set the focus point. Let's say I want the focus point to be like on this cup. And then I select the cup and I turn up the blur amount and it actually won't show until I go into the rendered view. I'm just gonna save it. And now it's extremely blurry and extremely noisy. Mm -hmm. That is because the blur amount is, I believe too much or I need to kind of tinker with that a little bit there. Um, but with ray tracing and stuff, like there's denoising, et cetera, et cetera. But that's just a demonstration. And actually like it takes longer to render that and stuff. So you can just do it in post. Right. I'm, gonna tr I'm gonna try to do that here. So I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna label this. I'm gonna say that this is like a field blur, which is the type of effect that I wanna add. And like, I wanna basically like, if you're good at composition and you're good at like painting and you're, you, all of that, you're good at like directing people's eyes. So I want to direct your <laughs> eyes a little bit and bless you. Mm -hmm. I want to go to blur, mm -hmm. go to blurred gallery and select field. And I'm going to go to like a field Ooh. blur. Wow. This is way too much, mm -hmm. but then you can start like putting blur points. Okay. So I have some blur like right here. I'm gonna then add another one here. And you can now see that like, I kind of have a depth of field type of effect. It's like a little too strong in some circumstances. I also like using, um, if I don't feel like using the field blur, I like using a bit of the tilt shift, um, mm -hmm. which is actually, whoopsie daisies i need to go to here hold on let's 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 uh i press escape right there and i'm just gonna go to filter blur blur gallery do tilt shift and so the tilt actually the tilt shift is a little more user friendly like mm -hmm. the, the the field blur for me is a lot more tinkering so let's let's continue with this like 45 degree angle kind of mindset, I guess, or or I could just also just do a 90 degree angle. So if I hold shift, I drag it. And then here, it's way too blurry here and here. So I just drag the field blur um, mm -hmm. by moving this mm -hmm. and moving this. And like, let's, let's keep it like right here. Okay, and then let's just press okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can kind, I have a little bit of blur like a little bit, maybe, and that's fine. Like you can see it's a little blurred right here. So it kind of like, as if you're like kind of zooming in on the, mm -hmm. on the uh, actual image. I'm now going to, I'm gonna duplicate this. So we're moving on, we're saying, all right, I'm gonna label this, right? I'm gonna just kind of, cause there's one thing that I'm always kind of confused about is the order of compositing. Like, oh, do I put the vignette at the end? Do I put it at mm -hmm. the beginning? Do I put the color correction at the end? Mm -hmm. uh, do I do the blurring at the beginning? So I just kind of want to, this is how I approach it. So I'm going to have the blur here. Okay, perfect. Blur, color correction, good, good. Um, another thing too, to consider too, when you export from Stager, my background color was um, uh, uh, gray. And you can actually adjust that here, like the background color. So if I had a background of like clouds and stuff and I wanted to adjust that in post, mm -hmm. when you have it in stager, I believe it's in the environment tab right here, the background, I could have chosen a, uh, an image, I believe. You can choose an image or like a different color. 
So you can, you can also adjust that when you export it to Photoshop, you can adjust that in here as well. So let's continue with this. Let's call this, uh, I want to sharpen, mm -hmm. I want to sharpen things. Like I want, now that I've blurred some stuff, I want to, which you actually can't see because I have, you can see it turns, I, when I turn this on and off, mm -hmm. uh, it comes back in, but I want to add some sharpening. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my filter. Actually, let's, let's label that. Let's say 03 sharpen and go to filter and select filter, go to other. You can actually just go to this sharpen area. Mm -hmm. um, but I like using this one called a high pass. And now it looks really weird. But if I go to uh, this radius, let's lower the radius. Wow. Mm -hmm. so now I, I like, I want you to like these lines and stuff to pop out right now. It's grayscale and that's no good. I'm going to actually change this color mode or excuse me, not a color blend mode, mode. Blend, blend mode. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> this hard light and uh, you can see it, it is subtle. Uh -huh. It is very subtle. Like if I zoom in, there you go, but you can see like right now it's a little blurry, but when I turn it on it now, it, it basically defines edges more mm -hmm. and, and allows like these things to pop out a little bit more. Um, and, and kind of brings you more into the space. It, it, it's, it does add like, it adds that extra five to 10% with your renders. I feel like that, um, really make it special. You could mm -hmm. also then decide like if you want, um, like to mask certain parts out, like I'm going to go to my brush tool and let's say like, I don't want certain areas to be as sharp. Like I don't really want this area to be, I don't want the ground to really be sharp. I don't want you to really be focusing on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to actually, uh, Okay, my brush is now correct, right? So now I'm actually just brushing in the areas that like I don't want to be as sharp, if that makes sense. Like I want them to still maintain blurriness. Mm -hmm. Now it's not like super blurry, but it's it's blurrier than the areas that are sharp. Okay, I've done sharpening. Now one of my personal favorites, and actually I would love some help i think i posted some help there's a really cool like and i've i've barely used this tab in photoshop but i downloaded this uh chromatic aberration effect here mm -hmm. from um a concept artist named roman i'm gonna butcher his name it's like roman jordeo i think and he he has a really cool chromatic aberration plugin on his gumroad that's free i actually don't know how to use it <laughs> um, but I'm just going to do a chromatic aberration, um, a manual one that I sort of know how to do. So I'm going to just duplicate my rendered, uh, image and go to, um, how do I get to like the, uh, I want to change the like values. Like I want to change, you know how you can change like the red, green, and blue ratios. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't remember how it's the I same think. menu. Go oh, to, blending uh, options. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I have okay. the channels. Chromatic aberration is like kind of a dispersion effect. Uh, and like, if you want it to look really like, I feel like it's kind of trendy in, in music right now is to do Ooh, that type yes, of, yes. to do like this. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I feel like it's a very trendy thing in music videos and all that like mm -hmm. glitchy effects but mm -hmm. it actually will add a lot so i'm gonna actually group it uh and call it 04 uh let's label it chrome ab uh, mm -hmm. let me save this and so you know moving it over like 10 pixels way too much right so i'm gonna control z but like if i move it one pixel yeah just it adds pieces. like a nice little fringe mm -hmm. that makes it seem more real, even though this is not like real life. Right. Um, I don't know if this plugin. So right now I've used chromatic aberration with the red values. 
I'm not sure if this plugin allows me to do like three different layers, if that makes sense. Like if I mm -hmm. control, uh, control J this, and then I go to the, my blending options here, and then I turn green instead, I think that's what this plugin does. Like, let's say I want the green to like move as well. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of adding like, and these are so like, these are very small adjustments and you can like, you can sort of see the fringing mm -hmm. yep. ever so slightly when I zoom in. Yep. Um, see that little color overspill. Oh, yeah, yep. but when you zoom mm -hmm. out, you don't, No. it's not very noticeable, mm -hmm. which is what I want. I don't want it to be like noticeable, like a, you know, crazy yeah. like hip hop music video or, or something like that. Like, <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of have a, a drawing in mm -hmm. almost lifelike effect. Mm -hmm. um, and then my, my, okay. And then basically my final touch that I generally add to, uh, to my compositing is that I like to either, either I'll add some more sharpening, um, but I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna really do that right now. I want to finally do a um, a new layer, or actually, my bad, how do I do the prompt? How do I do the prompt where like I have a new layer, but like I can change what type of layer it is, if that makes mm. sense. Like I wanna have a gray, you know what? I actually might just do it, man I'm gonna just do it manually. Uh, let's just do a solid color and let's do, I want it to be like half of what's half of 250. No, 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 excuse me. Let's do half of 255 or 255, 255, I believe is white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's divide that by two. Okay. So that's 128. So let's have all of these 128, 128, and then 128. Okay. And I'm going to turn this depth. Okay. So now I have a completely gray image, which is what I want. And I want to actually change it to an overlay. And then I don't know why there's a mask on it. Uh, how do I delete this mask? Disable, delete layer mask. Okay. So let's just do that for a second. And then let's go to overlay. And okay, yeah, the final thing I'm adding is noise. So 05, we're gonna call it noise. And I'm gonna go to filter. I'm selected on the group. That's why that was not working. And we're going to, let's turn that one off. Go to color fill, which is the layer that I have. And then go to the blur or excuse me, the noise, add noise, convert to smart object. Boom. And now, okay. It is showing up. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's way too much just to, mm -hmm. for demonstrating purposes. Mm. Now I've added noise to it, but I'm really just going to dial it in. Um, and it's kind of like adding film grain is kind of what I'm trying to do. Mm. Uh, let's yeah. just add, let's do the amount to like five and it's still like too much for me. Like it, it does add to it. Um, but I just want to decrease the opacity now and dial that in a little bit and keep it on overlay mode. Let's keep it at 25%. Okay, so let's turn everything off. Oop, and uh, oop, not, the, not the actual thing. Okay, so we went from having, this is the color corrected one. Mm -hmm. um, Let's actually, let's let's delete this layer mask. Okay, this is the one with like no correction at all. Let me turn this off. This is no correction, but then as I add a, a vignette, I add blur, which the blur I can maybe mess with more. I add sharpening, I add chromatic aberration, I add noise. And I think all of these things just kind of add like it's icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. I think your, your composition and your 3D work still needs to be good. Uh, and that's like the main focus. And this is really like the additional steps that you add to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still, oh, and then I want to actually add this depth map, which I want to actually be more towards the beginning. And let's just like adjust it. 
Although I actually, because I put the layer all the way down here, I don't think it would show up if I'm not mistaken. Let's just do that. And let's, yeah, let's keep it there. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that about does it. Like I could also do this in After Effects. I could just like, <laughs> you know, export it here. Uh -huh. And if I want this to be like an animated GIF, uh, I could just, I'm not sure how to do this one-to-one -one in After Effects. It'd probably take me a little bit of tinkering to uh, to get all of these co compositings to be exactly one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I already have a PNG image. Drag it into here, drag it into a layer. And then, I don't know, let's like, then you kind of just start going crazy. Like you could do, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a distort. I think like a wave distortion or, you know, whatever. But like, for example, noise noise is really nice in it because like I can add, oh, wait, hold on. Let's actually, let's do a uh, an adjustment layer. That's what I'm looking for. So this is kind of like the one-to-one. -one. This would be how I would do the adjustments in, um, in After Effects. And actually there's a really good plugin from, uh, oh my gosh, I think it's called the like, plugin guys or something like that mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna pull up the plugin real quick it's called a uh, chromatic quick chromatic aberration they just came out with the third one and this yeah i mean this i would basically do the same type of thing but if i want it to be like an animated gif i would just want to do uh pause it maybe add some noise and i think the noise value it's kind of like a seed value when i do it in after effects when i drag this into here Whoops, I actually dragged into the wrong one. Let's 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 label, let's call that chrome ab. And let's let's actually put the noise above that and call it mm -hmm. noise. Uh let's do uh let's go to the noise here. Drag the noise onto here. Okay, there you go. So I've now added noise and I think yeah, okay. So the noise will animate. Um, if you want like a GIF, because uh, you can't animate in Stager, but if you do want not just like a static image, I would suggest doing stuff like this. So you can actually, you can still see the noise a little bit here and I don't want it to be overpowering. Like I don't want it to be that like that. I mean, maybe if you want it to look like really old footage or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see a use case for that. But overall, I just wanted to have it kind of toned down and it's, you know, I would think another cool thing to do to go back to like a light blocking idea is like if you could animate the mm -hmm. light, like so if it was a tree swaying, yes, um, yes. you could have the shadows change over time. Mm -hmm. So a very long workaround for that could be maybe <laughs> to change the orientation of your light blockers and then render out PNGs and then mm -hmm. arrange those. Like, so let's mm -hmm. say you do that 10 times and then you could arrange that, um, yeah. which would be a pretty short video, but um, yeah, this is basically, yeah. So, I'm, I mean, the workflow was we kind of started with, if, if I were to review it, we started with the, the brief, we started with some like quotes, we started with some like other designers, we started with a shape language, we, we thought a little bit about the shading, what I'm going for. I want textiles. Uh, it's Japanese inspired. It's inspired mm -hmm. by Virgil Abloh, Peter Tarka. It's like all these shapes. And then from there, we jump into Stager. The, the, in hindsight, and I think because this is, like, this is a live stream, I, I probably would have worked a lot more in terms of like the composition and the setup and just having things completely grayscale at the beginning to make sure I'm happy with where everything is. Whoops. Uh, but um, then from there, once I'm happy with that situation and the composition, I would then start adding all these shading shaders and textures and, and getting into designer uh, and messing around in that realm because you're right, like in shading world and stuff like that, it's a rabbit hole. Yeah. And if you want to be kind of like fast and effective with this working with like some of these assets like and i think too with like 3d it's like do you have to open designer and try to make 
do you have to try to reinvent the wheel each time like make all of these to make all of these shaders from scratch which is why like adobe stock is great in this instance would take mm -hmm. such a long time mm -hmm. to learn how to do all of these in like designer uh but it, it's like a pick and choose game do i need to make all of this from scratch no like but what can i do from scratch like maybe i for example in this project i made this fabric texture and that is for me that's like the focal point for me it's like okay this is this is the cool thing i did in designer mm -hmm. the rest of it is more showing off like other assets other applications and i'm and really when i upload this project a really popular thing to do for material artists or um in the gaming world there's environment artists where you have to be good at kind of creating scenes and um mm -hmm. maybe you're good at like concept art too but making mm -hmm. these types of shaders you generally have like a shader ball like you do in a in a substance sampler and you take a image of that and you show off all of these maps you show mm -hmm. off uh let me let me just demonstrate real quick let's go to the uh projects go to designer i'm gonna jump in here we got five minutes uh sure. before with the artist spotlight check out the tab above the chat for more info on how you can nominate yourself or another artist for a future spotlight there is a uh, link to nominate yourself why not thank you voodoo val for the uh chat notification yeah so when i upload this to behance i'm gonna upload the the final render which mm -hmm. like i said i'm going to change the composition but a huge thing when you're using substance designer is to basically set up a shot of the materials so you set you set up a shot of like a let's go to a sphere tiled and you show off this mm -hmm. pattern it's tileable so you show off that this can be brought into like a video game uh unreal engine any any other type of like 3d software it's usable um, and like I said too, with this type of setup, I could just change, uh, if I just change this like bitmap here, mm -hmm. it's just a different pattern Ooh. and then it's tileable, that mm -hmm. tileable, uh, different with a different pattern. Uh, nice. so right. When I upload this to Behance, I'm going to, I'm going to show off this shader because that's what I made manually. And I want to mm -hmm. show off this graph and kind of like this process. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. and and really like the final thing is like really showing off the shading. Like the shading is the name of the game with these types of stuff and you can adjust the lighting. Uh, but then I'm also gonna show off some of these assets, mm -hmm. maybe even the brief, um, maybe even like this chair asset, some mm -hmm. stuff like that. I like um, that chair. It looks like it's been sat on lots of times. You know, yeah. it has that faded. <laughs> right. Faded top, that looks really right, good. That Actually, this was the gradient uh, that I tried to make in designer. And I think either I'm going to scrap it or I'm just going to do a different type of designer mm -hmm. uh, project file. But I really I wanted a goal of mine is to try to create something like a like a risograph here. Uh, I really like this type of effect, which is not really populating. For, oh, no, there you go. Like risograph effects are so mm. neat. And I wanted to try to do that in designer. I think it is achievable. Um, it's like this type of printing method, hmm. which Brush like it is touch. kind of like a gradient. Mm -hmm. um, but it, but I think a risograph, it's like when it prints, it, it it like burns very microscopic holes into the paper. And it, it anyways. That's how you uh, end up with texture on it. It kind of has that yeah, texture exactly. look and feel. Right. Nice, and that's like nice. what that's like what designer I feel like is really good for too. It's it's mm. like adds more mm. texture to it. Honestly, like maybe a better, smarter workaround, if to be completely honest, is just maybe going back to this uh additional layers and mm -hmm. maybe selecting like going here and mm. selecting this. And then maybe just getting like a 2D texture and then projecting it on. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. that makes sense. Like, yeah. cause I think Adobe stock literally has uh like risograph, like mm -hmm. uh, let's not go to 3D. Uh, let's go to like photos and they, they definitely have grunge maps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They must Big have to clever on the chat. 
I like res re soul graph. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming yeah, back I today. Mispronounced it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, she she, she uh, enunciated the whole word. Uh, Alessandra, thank you. you. Uh, and Z by HP Tech. Rich Rick H says, I really want to learn not to be intimidated by these node graphs. So much to learn. And Alessandra says, I know, right? Same here. Me too. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, gonna be gotta, a, a work in progress right there yeah you mm -hmm. jump into like designer and stuff mm -hmm. and then you start kind of jumping into like other apps you you start kind of not only is it like you start learning all of them but then you start kind of being like oh this is kind of similar in this application like mm -hmm. i already knew how to do this in this one yeah I, um, and and so check out kyle's um behance so when so that you can see the documenting his process so that you can go back and try out some of those things yourself yeah that's, absolutely that's i it. might yes. i might also upload i think in behance too you can upload the project files right oh yes right yes you can so. correct yes you can yes so. you can so please please do so <laughs> oh we're going to take a momentary break at this at this uh right now uh with uh uh kyle's um process and voodoo Val just shared the link to kyle's um, behance page i don't know why it says well abate but uh um... oh, that's that's my um <laughs> so actually i i uh i'm really into music and it wall wallaby just kind of became like a nickname for me when i was younger and then i actually started doing some i actually still do make music especially mm -hmm. if you're doing like motion graphics and stuff like that i think music is huge but anyways mm -hmm. Basically, that was like my DJ name, and then okay. it's basically my it's basically my screen name for everything. So it's kind of just like an alias at this point. Nice, I would well, say. <laughs> nice. Well, there it is. Thank you, uh, Voodoo Val, for sharing the link. Elizabeth, thank you for stopping by again today. She says Kyle is a great mentor. Nice. So let's take a moment to talk about the artist spotlight. Here is the artist. Go ahead, and uh, Kyle, give us a little yeah. uh, look. Yeah, so I actually know Catherine through. See, this is like why I think that Discord's so great. I would never have met Catherine mm. or a lot of people that I, like I admire and think are like very good at their craft. And she, um, I met her through another great resource, which is called Learn Squared, and they they uh, mm. they're right there actually. Okay, I'll uh, look that up. They're awesome. Like if you haven't like gone to school or something, like and you are intimidated of art and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna be as good as someone that like went to art school? Like those courses are a gold mine. Okay. Um, but anyways, I met her there. And actually this is a perfect scenario of what I'm talking about, right? She, she has like a very good workflow, I think of like, she starts with like a brief and she's researching mm. like the history, she's doing like concept art. So mm -hmm. she's researching, um, you know, China in the 1800s and she understands what they'd be carrying, maybe why it's, it's like giving more story and depth to these paintings and pictures. Uh, and she actually, to speed up her workflow, she knows how to do some, uh, 3d mm. modeling. So wow. she, what she does is she actually models this. So it's grayscale. Then she, I believe she then does, yeah, she has it out right here, right? So it starts with 3D form, mine work. Um, it kind of points out some of these. So ah. I believe she uses something like SketchUp um, mm -hmm. and then makes it and then paints it over in, uh, in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And when you do these in 3D, you get a lot of... Um, information you get like shadow information if you set up your lights like some of the work in terms of and by no means am i a painter or like a <laughs> or like a photoshop map painter by any means i would love to get into it eventually i think i'm still uh sharpening my sword in other areas she also has a really good uh youtube tutorial too about digital painting um it's like super in-depth and i think it's all in photoshop if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, her work is awesome. Her like this, this, I, I don't know. What's my favorite piece of hers. I think I, my favorite one of hers, it's either of these two, I think it's this one mm -hmm. or it's this one. Wow. Um, 
I think Ooh, I'm a sucker God. for blue and like, <laughs> uh, I think that's my favorite color. Uh huh. And there's a lot of that in here and just like the textures and kind of the depth that she captures in these and like, um, the Chinese, details, Chinese. the amount of details and yeah. complex uh, objects that are in there. Those compositions can, are hard. Yeah, and you can wow. see too, like her sense of lighting is really good too. Yes, like, uh -huh. it's not just a straight beam of light here. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. There's a good, there's a good fall off. Uh, it's, it's yet again talking, talking about like light block, like it's going through a window, it's getting hit mm -hmm. through panes, mm -hmm. um, and then she's really good at leading your eye like right. i don't really know there's so many like old paintings that like i know you could draw a triangle and it's like trying to see who you look at first and then you go to this person but her, her sense of composition is fantastic um so and yeah i mean look like then i met her just on this learn square discord and we were working on uh courses together mm. and um because they sell a wide range of courses okay. to get better at anything whether it's 3d photoshop painting mm -hmm. uh doing like crazy simulations doing hard surface modeling which actually i think adobe just came out with uh, a beta for uh for modeling i think it's called adobe modeler or something like that or some, something amongst those lines mm -hmm. um but yeah Catherine is, is a beast. yeah she's good uh i'm looking at that um at that um, um drum uh um the the third one the the and uh and it's amazing oh the, how the submarine the living quarters yeah yeah oh yeah. my gosh like like taking the time to even yeah, add like, things that you would actually have in real life yeah if i was living there <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah, it's interesting, it's interesting like to think of like real life is not ever like perfect or clean, and I think she really captures that like with these footsteps. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it actually looks like someone's lived here, like the, right. the cloth. Um, like even I think that these are shoes and and like clothing, and so they're kind of like ragged, and they might have mm -hmm. dirt on it. Mm -hmm some of these books are like not perfectly aligned so then so then it's also to it like start you start kind of asking questions like about the person that lives yes. here mm -hmm. like why like why it, why are their feet so dirty like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, kind of likes do they live well kind of likes do they live bed. that's right mm -hmm. right yeah <laughs> yeah like yeah. why do they have um I wish I could zoom. I don't think you can't zoom in on Instagram, but actually wait. Okay. Here's a good point. She actually had see, and that's actually a great thing too. I think to consider when you're uploading work and when you're applying to jobs and stuff, which I also kind of recommend in like mentorship stuff is like, she is su does such a good job of explaining how she made this and like her mm -hmm. workflow. Yep. yep. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's cool to just have a really cool image on your behance, but when you really get in depth and when you're actually like applying to jobs and even for myself, like as a, like a designer, I like to see how you did it. And honestly, like to some degree, that's more fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeing how you got there, I think is very, um, that's why like, I encourage people to have that be hand so that they can upload as much background info on that person, on that project, in instead of just the final so that we can all learn from it. Cause that's how I learned. Yeah, and and like getting rid of that like curtain where you're like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, like this is magic, like I could never do this. Um, yeah, exactly. I think it's just so crucial. Even like, dude, even this like door, like it's like kind of it, mm -hmm. like in three D, right? It's perfect. Like it's a perfect mm -hmm. flat, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I guess cylindrical door, rectangular looking thing, right? Um, but when she paint when she does a paint even before her paint over she starts adding some like imperfections and like scratches to mm -hmm. the surfaces mm -hmm. um and this seems like honestly it seems like most of the work i mean i'm not good at painting but mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the legwork is really done with this like line art and like mm -hmm. 
defining these shapes and then and then having fun and kind of getting Ooh, a yeah. paint over dude yeah. even even the little here, red like, highlight right there huh <laughs> yeah the yeah. highlight of like uh -huh. the right the red light here uh -huh. is fantastic yep. like this this light source and you know i think that goes back to like how light is so important and really i guess any art i can't really think of any art medium that it's not and so like mm -hmm. she she's aware of this lights here this lights here mm -hmm. how is it influencing her scene and mm -hmm. then makes me question is there a light is this a light mm -hmm. like right yeah some um, track lighting some uh, uh that office lighting on the ceiling and it, mm -hmm. yeah and then another thing too is like she actually um has somewhat of a story this captain is a mountaineer on an arctic expedition right so then it gives more context right like mm -hmm. they're on an expedition so there's mm -hmm. a map mm -hmm. there's a sled mm -hmm. uh this actually explains the type of dog so it's a husky i think yeah. which makes more sense right um yeah so yeah, yeah very cool it, it just kind of adds like a very interesting purpose to it um Voodoo Val she, says, I, uh, digital painter here. Sorry, I had to jump in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alessandra says, I was about to say that about a Voodoo Val. That's right. Uh, Becca mm -hmm. says, uh, beautiful work. Alessandra says, yeah, this is hard for me, but uh, good for this artist. And uh, Voodoo Val says, please give Kat a follow. There is a link. D Cruz, thank you. It says, uh, amazing. And Catherine says, if I was living there, I'd need a fridge. <laughs> I would need a fridge too. <laughs> Yes. No, this is super talented and it, it takes that digital painting to a whole new level. Like, yeah, this, I, I, let me do the line work. I'll draw it. But that painting. Oh, man, that's amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, I I'm a sucker for this one, too, actually. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, and honestly, my jargon for painting is is not the best. But it, it to me, this seems like it's an oil painting. Mm -hmm. Um or uh yeah and like the reflections here mm -hmm. are fantastic like it, mm -hmm. it rained mm -hmm. um so it kind of gives context of like what the weather is like here she and yet again she adds depth uh just like actually i was trying to do in here like with this depth map she actually adds depth uh mm -hmm. with the like maybe it's foggy or like the clouds have hit down mm -hmm. here um you can't it's you know mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives me um like rembrandt vibes <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, very oil painting like that's right yeah, yeah. with these clouds mm -hmm. um and then yeah i mean like these gradients that are like blending into each other it looks kind of like some parts are like rustic or rusty uh that some of the sand is like perfect still um how how does the water kind of start um like where are the puddles formed where are they not formed so like she she has a lot of the puddles forming on the steps mm -hmm. um yeah it's truly a lot of detail and like a lot of thought into it and if i'm not mistaken she actually no she did make that a three i oh, know it i think she started this with a, a 3d I, model yeah i saw something if uh, a, a setup where it was flying in yeah uh, so yeah there it goes yeah uh -huh, yet again like mm -hmm. yeah Over yet there. again i think this is actually the same exact Ooh, uh, one that i'm referring to mm -hmm. but um right yep. see this is a perfect example too of like she's she's pretty much showing yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. it does explain it and wait oh my gosh instagram actually <laughs> it crops out oh mm -hmm. my gosh it crops out uh yeah one of the cooler parts too where she actually has characters uh oh wow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. she has characters right here too um but yeah yet again just kind of getting into that point of she shows her process and if i'm not mistaken too and i'm speaking a little bit out of context like when you're doing digital paintings and stuff this really speeds up your workflow when you know how to do these types of 3d works and yeah i think that this is a great example of like don't just be you're 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 putting yourself at a deficit if you are trying to get into like concept art or you're trying to be a digital painter doing 3d speeds up your workflow right right like when she does this render she gathers a depth map i believe and then i think Catherine is in the like, chat right now. Catherine has joined us okay. on Behance. We finally 
uh, pushed her to, <laughs> to, to come on in. Uh, she says there is a, a, a 3D model, and that's it. Unfortunately, it does crop it out. The website shows all the images in its full size. I did not understand that was the same Catherine that said, if I was living there, I would need a fridge. But welcome, Catherine, to be hands. Go ahead. So you think that there was a 3D mapping uh, yeah, that I, helped? I believe mm -hmm. she does do some like lighting. Yeah. It would have to, mm -hmm. so that it casts shot. Like she doesn't have to paint in all the shadows mm -hmm. herself. Like right. I think that's she, right. There you go. In this mm -hmm. instance, like you can mm -hmm. see this fish mm -hmm. and like um, the shadow and also the wall. too, mm -hmm. like drawing a human. If you were to try to draw all these humans from scratch, it could take a little bit of time. But she starts with base meshes, three D meshes right here, like. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's just like a shape language thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. she says, for... uh, I use a clown pass and various render passes. Mm -hmm. I haven't used a depth map. So okay. I got to figure out what a clown pass is, unless that's a joke. Uh, but that, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, a real not, thing. She might have to explain a little bit there. But yeah, yeah. like, mm -hmm. she just has all these shapes and it's all kind of ready for her to like paint upon. Mm -hmm. Um yes you know right. very cool good work amazing work catherine please follow the links thank you voodoo of all for dropping the links in the chat there is a link for the website and uh a link to the instagram already in the chat and i think uh we finally got catherine on behance and she'll probably add some some of the projects on her behance mm -hmm. page so you have one place to see it all awesome work thank you for that kyle that's awesome Yes, Absolutely. very cool work. Um, if just want to remind everybody that Adobe Live replays are available when we are offline and we have replays both on YouTube and Behance. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the creative goodness. Uh, you want to give us a little bit um, of advice of what to do when we're starting out with um, this uh, 3D apps by Adobe? Yeah, I mean, I think you should first, if you feel comfortable, for example, like in Illustrator or something like that, like right here, I'm going to actually do like, uh, let's like continue with, yeah, I mean, I think that you should explore the apps that you're in and see if they have any capabilities. Like I am somewhat comfortable in Illustrator mm -hmm. and I know that like you could take an S, you could take a SVG file, like, I don't know, let's do like... I think I was trying to mess with this, like a Japanese uh, sigil and let's do like SVG and then let's, mm -hmm. let's like take it and let's, let's save this as a, uh, uh, I guess a PNG will work. I kind of want an SVG, mm -hmm. which I think you can actually just download from here, right? Yeah, you can. Original file, SVG, there save as, okay, there's Boom. scalable vector graphic mm -hmm. there. Right? right so it's like if you feel that you're only really comfortable with like at illustrator i think that mm -hmm. it would be a good idea to maybe start here be like okay i have the svg right here i drag it in and then let me actually close out this 3d some th things that i can show so yeah i think that this is a great place to start let me choose this svg and go to window go to 3d and materials mm -hmm. and then mess with all of these but I'm going to do inflation and it's going to take one little second. And now, Ooh, what? well, but now, so I think it is 3d. Uh -huh. And so then I'm going to take this, I'm going to do five. So this is like, if what I maybe have done 10 clicks right now, mm -hmm. like not too many go to export, export selection. I'm just going to export it to desktop. I don't really feel like really organizing this example. Sure. Let me just do a new stager file. Let me let me like close out. I don't want to get too crazy here. I mean, I think yeah. my computer I actually don't <laughs> I don't know if you can have multiple stager files open. I'm just going to close. Okay. And because I already have the render, I'm like okay, I'm comfortable with closing it out right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to close sampler as well. Don't save. Yeah. I mean, my overall statement with your question is I think you should get into stager, get into sampler. I think that those are the two. Stager and sampler. Easiest. Mm -hmm. 
most friendly uh like literal 3d softwares yeah that's um, what you said that ramp starts right like that's the, uh, like the sure the curve the, the curve learning curve <laughs> yeah so and right like hopefully this works uh did it work wait no i just oh my bad i think i chose the wrong that was the vector graphic Ooh. i want i want the obj which is right here okay i was a little confused oh wow so this should work alessandra says i love flowers oh, so i'm awesome. not complaining it about works. this that's right and that's my last name flowers so flores i love that. yeah oh nice uh -huh. Uh -huh. look at that yeah wow. so like huh. i would suggest start exploring if you're like all right i only really know how to use illustrator i mean i all i literally did here was just mm -hmm. import a vector graphic make sure you select the vector graphic go to this inflation tool create 3d volume by adding convex depth to path um mess with some of these parameters i've also done some cool things too like let's say i don't even want to use a uh uh, a vector graphic like i just want to do a simple uh because i could draw like i'm an illustrator i'm I'm a 2d illustrator that's my main mm -hmm. thing and so i could draw stuff and then take it through that tool and and do the inflation tool yeah um, absolutely yeah that's cool let's do a new let's do like a star and then like if you extrude it uh-huh extruding mm -hmm. is the easiest one and the mm -hmm. fastest like i just go to extrude mm -hmm. and then just do the exact same thing as i just did and then export selection as export a... it to my desktop uh -huh. okay now it's in my obj's go to stager and then go to file i think actually you could drag it uh -huh. so there's two ways of doing this i'm gonna actually just go to the obj i would oh. i would suggest also labeling all this mm -hmm. okay beautiful <laughs> now you have a star wow so yeah huh. i mean i would say illustrator is a really good place mess with all of these mess with the depth if you if you turn this depth up the the uh import will mm -hmm. be better or excuse me mm -hmm. not better it'll be wider mm -hmm. um but but i don't think you really need to once you actually have it in here and it's 3d uh you can just extrude it like this nice. so um yeah that that would be my suggestion i would get into stager I would get into sampler and start like messing around with sampler because you can just you you don't need to learn you don't need to learn how to make all of these like materials i think mm -hmm. like materials can be a little intimidating you can just go to your library and i think i demonstrated things. this a while ago with yeah. someone said it looked like a uh actually one artist that i just found recently too is a beast at um I'm not going to go find her page. I'm just going to actually do it here. Like she would take, she was modeling Game Boys and then she would take it into, uh, this was another material that I was considering using. This is from Adobe stock. And so, yeah, I would start messing around with this and then be like, okay, then my other suggestion, once you get into like stager sampler and you start using some of the other apps that you're comfortable with, um, you should start figuring out how to export these to other mm -hmm. things. But in, in Sampler, for example, I already showed this off a little bit yesterday, but you just start dragging things. Yeah. So, okay, I want this. And maybe this is not the greatest. Uh, let's, okay, let's just do it more simple. This is like too, too crazy. Get, get two minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's, let's do like scratches, mm -hmm. cracks, hopefully this this load too. yes yeah, that's right, right. Mm -hmm. and then and then just learn how to like export this let's say i want this on my um on my um star mm -hmm. i believe now that i have this selected it should export to oh there you go it is sending it so send to stager okay cool boom so, yeah, start, <laughs> start getting like more wow mm -hmm. with like jumping around these mm -hmm. apps because they're all meant for different functionalities mm -hmm. um and Very then once cool. you do start getting more comfortable with it your confidence level starts going up mm -hmm. and you just kind of start feeling like these things aren't as intimidating as they as they really as they really shouldn't be i mean and and i'm kind of speaking at nauseum about this but like with stuff like discord and stuff you literally have 
like you, you know what stack overflow is like where you you go to like submit a question online and then you hope someone answers it like mm -hmm. i mean discord Somebody. you literally have thousands of humans that are mm -hmm. all either in for example with like substance suite you literally have a group of the developers and people all there to help you Very and just cool. strangers to help yeah. you so you know yes. like the intimidation factor shouldn't be there, especially if you use resources like that. Right. Enjoy, enjoy join the community, engage with the community. So that gives you the confidence and steps to, to move forward with your design ideas. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kyle. Thank you, Voodoo Val, for all the chat work in there and all everybody who left a comment in the chat big ups to you please take a moment to fill out the survey to make your opinions heard in adobe live stick around for a special pick of a past xd daily creative challenge and i am dtm aka delta tango mike and that was kyle jameson sharing lots of goodness with these amazing apps substance uh stager and sampler Go ahead and try it out. I, I, I am the same as Alessandra saying, Adobe Illustrator, here I come. I'm going to try it out. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next time. See ya. Peace out.